Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, welcome back to my channel. This week the European Space Agency are launching their space mission to explore Jupiter and its icy moons. The JUICE mission will launch on the 13th of April 2023 at 12.15 UTC. It will be launching on an Ariane 5 rocket from the European Spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. So what's there to be excited about? Let's find out. As the name suggests, JUICE, aka the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, will study three out of the four Galilean moons. Jupiter is known to host at least 80 moons, but the Galilean moons are so big that they were spotted all the way back in the 1600s by Galileo Galilei. Out of the four moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, the latter three are all ocean worlds believed to host liquid water beneath their icy surfaces and possible hosts to life. While being the most volcanically active body in the solar system, unfortunately, Io will not be explored this time. JUICE's focus is on the water world. The fundamental question JUICE will try to address is, are we alone in the universe or are we the only living things in the cosmos? However, in order to answer this question, we need to first determine if other planets possess the necessary conditions to support life. Jupiter and its system of orbiting moons is the perfect environment to investigate this, as together with Jupiter's powerful influence, they form a mini version of our solar system. Jupiter is not a star like our sun is. It doesn't have the mass required for nuclear fusion, but it does have a similar composition of hydrogen and helium. Nevertheless, Jupiter is still large enough that it can generate immense amounts of internal heat, so much so that it emits twice as much energy as it receives from the Sun. Given how far away it is, you might expect Jupiter's upper atmosphere to be around minus 70 degrees Celsius, but observations show it's closer to 400 degrees Celsius. Now, Jupiter isn't a blazing bonfire to its surrounding satellites. Recall that the surface temperature of the Sun is about 5,500 degrees Celsius. But instead, its huge mass exerts a huge gravitational force tugging and pulling on its moons. And this in turn generates heat. It's kind of like when you pull an elastic band. If you do it enough times, you'll find that it warms up. This phenomenon is known as tidal heating, and for a long time, scientists believed that this was what melts the rocks on Io into magma, and it also keeps the interior of the icy moons warm enough to host liquid water. But it turns out that not only does Jupiter's gravity compress and stretch the moons, tidal heating also occurs through the gravitational interplay among the moons themselves, so the gravity between the moons. If you can get a better understanding of the source of this heat, then you can have a better understanding of its influence on the evolution and habitability of this system. Now, JUICE will be taking a tour of the solar system with many planetary flybys, but ultimately the focus is on Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. On our planet, life thrives in the depths of the ocean, particularly near hydrothermal vents that release heat from the Earth's core. This begs the question, could Europa's saltwater ocean also support life in a comparable manner? Unlike Jupiter's other moons, Callisto, the farthest from the planet, lacks sufficient gravitational forces to generate internal heat. But despite this, signs of a subsurface liquid water ocean have still emerged, and this is likely to have been caused by the immense pressure from its thick ice covering and the impurities within the ocean that help keep the water from freezing at cold temperatures. The ultimate destination, however, is a successful orbital insertion around Ganymede. This is the largest moon in our solar system. It's even larger than the planet Mercury. Additionally, it boasts the unique feature of being the only moon with a magnetic field. This field acts as a shield of sorts, and it could enhance the likelihood of life forms being able to exist on Ganymede. Moreover, the magnetic field generates auroras, and these are visible thanks to the presence of oxygen in Ganymede's atmosphere. To determine whether or not the moon's ocean is habitable for life, further research is definitely necessary. 
Now, Juice will carry 10 instruments on its journey to the Jovian system, and this will help it accomplish its goals. 3GM will measure its gravitational field. Magus is a visible and near-infrared spectrometer to study the composition and mineralogy of Jupiter's moon surfaces. RIME is a radar to study the subsurface structure and properties of the icy moons. SWI will measure the thermal emission from the atmospheres. GALA is a laser altometer. It will study the topography of Jupiter's moons. UVS is a UV spectrometer and it will study the composition and properties of the atmospheres. PEP is a plasma instrument designed to study the distribution, acceleration and properties of plasma particles in Jupiter's magnetosphere and in the vicinity of the moons. RPWI is a radio and plasma wave instrument to study the magnetic and electric fields in the vicinity of the moons. JMAG will measure the magnetic field. And finally, Janus is a visible camera for high resolution imaging of Jupiter, its moons and its surrounding environment. Janus will provide up to 2.4 meter resolution on Ganymede. So that's equivalent to being able to see a tennis ball from one kilometer distance. But it's not quite enough to see any space whales hiding in its oceans, unfortunately. But don't get too excited too soon. Upon leaving Earth, Juice will take eight years to arrive at its destination. So we have a long way to go yet. It will stay there for four years of good science though. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.